Uh, hello, my name is Oldrich Hosman and I spoke yesterday with uh, some of you about uh, possible cooperation and one of the main question was uh, how could I work with you or what I use, which kind of methods I'm working with. So I would like to show you more concretely uh, some of the first step steps how we can continue and how we could work together first we will look on my website on few pictures and i will comment it so here is an example of uh, one project in the capital of Slovak Republic in Bratislava where I was working together with a team of teachers and parents and the first we meet together and we speak about their needs what they would like to do this, this was a creation of Waldorf garden there the very important step in the beginning is to observe the place and uh, we can have a look how such a cooperation look like here you can see all the people outside looking very carefully and observing the place and I am working with the method of uh, trying to feel different atmospheres on the different places of the plot and those atmospheres, those moods, we try to mark in the map. I will have a look on your map, on your plot, and I will tell you more exactly. You will see what I mean. So, for example, when we look on the east side of your plot, here, on that side, there is a road. And we will be looking around, because probably somewhere from here will be the main entrance to the school I mean also some parking places and some pavements because on other side in here is a wetland and I guess that probably the main entrance could be somewhere in here on this side so the main and the first step which I would like to do with you is for example, walking in this area here, looking how deep is the mood of the road, how deeply into the plot goes the atmosphere or the mood of the road. So let's say we will be walking here and saying maybe somewhere here, somewhere here about we do not feel influence of the road so let's say that that area from that line which we feel together is dividing possible place for parking for example about, about here and from that line which is showing us a really different atmosphere between road and inside plot could be a border where we can think to begin with the structure of the school and all around the place on all sides we will do the same so we will look carefully where 
how how far from the border could be for example beginning of our buildings or playgrounds so we will be quite carefully looking which moods are on the place because also on the west side here where is the wetland there is for sure atmosphere the mood of the wetland which is not ending exactly on the edge of the wetland it is influencing a little bit farther into the plot so first building probably will begin a little bit deeper in the plot and when we will have ready some area where we will be all of us quite sure when where we can build some new building houses then i will prepare for you together with you all rooms which you need and we will be placing them in the plot i will make a model of the place for you and you have a list of all your rooms which we will go through together before then i will do together with you from uh, small pieces of paper all necessary rooms together we will write on them sizes we will write on them names and then we will move them in the plot speaking where could be the main entrance or where could be some classrooms some main meeting hall where could be for example a parking place for cars for how many cars where will be some main pavements some walking roads and of course in this stage we will also speak about north and south and east and west and we will move those little classrooms and other rooms as long as all of you will agree with it and this methodology is very helpful because during such a work it is not only thinking but it is also feeling and also will with movement so this could be the first step of our common work together so these uh, borders of mood which we will together find and we will together mark in our sketches and in our plan these are really truthful borders which we really experience in the space or in the room they are existing so we will try to go as close to the soul of the place as possible i mean the existing place existing plot because there is a really influence of some pavements there is a really influence of the road and only some part of the central part of your plot of your plot is let's say the best for your school because nearby the borders there could be some other functions like maybe open spaces some gardens for children some playgrounds parking places or maybe somewhere a little storage somewhere nearby we will see 
this all will come from our common visiting the place, common feelings, common discussion all together until we will be very sure of the placement of all buildings. Uh, on the project in Bratislava, where we made together Waldorf Garden, we were looking carefully on borders on different moods. And then we designed there, for example, a lake in a good distance from the walking area. So when we begin in empty garden to feel some borders of the atmospheres of the moods, somewhere here we draw, we made a line, a feeling line, a feeling border between atmosphere which is nearby the road and atmosphere which is in the middle of the plot and later on we made this model from the plastiline because now here in the middle there was nothing there was only the feeling and through common discussion we decided about the shape of the little lake in the middle of the plot so this organic shape came later after our feeling together. So here you can see the whole kindergarten garden and here are existing roads and some functions for example, like places for growing herbs, they begin in certain distance from the walking place. Not immediately just here. This distance we need to change the mood. Here you can see the sketch of the shape of the lake. And all came very step by step listening our feelings and building organic concept slowly, listen other people, our colleagues, opinions, feelings, of course thoughts, thinking, but mainly this beginning is based on our feelings. The main structure will come from the process. when we will be sure about placement of the buildings on the plot when all small papers of classrooms and necessary rooms will be properly placed on the plan we can connect them with the plan we can glue them on the plan and we can begin on those places where we have uh, those small pieces of paper to build some forms using plastiline or clay. Here on those pictures on my website you can see the process of uh, creating uh, areal of a new Waldorf school in Prague and here you can see the very early beginning stages of the work where one of the members of the group is showing from where is coming the sun rays of the sun into the building so he's making a gesture with his fingers opening the form for the light on this on this uh, part will be a small kindergarten room there and then speaking together and controlling 
every room we can together begin to build it in the model. It is a conscious process because you really need to know some relationships between rooms, their sizes, also the heights of the rooms. So we speak together and we develop all together. All the time we are controlling all the rooms if we have everything what we need and we are also beginning to play with basic organic forms. So on those few pictures you can see the work which was done about in two days there. And this was the result the third day. Here on the last picture you can see the kindergarten and this little yard it is the first day move when one of the members moved with his fingers inside from the direction from where is coming the main sunshine the sunlight inside so here is a south and light is going inside so he was following the direction of the main sunlight during the day here and in this shape you can see that there are three classrooms one classroom second classroom third classroom and all this small kindergarten you see that it is mainly very very round and that was the second principle which i will implement in the work together that for very very small children we need mainly round and elliptic or oval forms very soft forms we will use for the first seven year period as soft and curved spaces as possible then here in the middle of that model is a basic school this is for children which are in between 7 and 14 for that age is usually good to use combination of forms like straight forms and also round forms because in the period between 7 and 14 children develop not only moving not only following but also their feelings they are trying to understand atmospheres moods and they are really in a stage that they need to have around them not only round forms but also a little bit straight forms and on that model in the end here there is a part like a lyceum for children from 14 till 18 or 17 and those children which are more in this age 16 17 18 for them we can use much more straight lines much more geometric like a standing up waking up more vertical architecture so this was just an example how we can begin to work together one of the main questions it was given to me was how to create Waldorf schools how to create them what are the main principles to create Waldorf what is typical for Waldorf architecture during the period when uh, children are going into the Waldorf schools they are learning through experience this is the main principle we should do our architecture the way that we will really 
be able to experience different moods, different atmospheres, and really enjoy to be inside and outside in the campus. And there are three main pillars in Waldorf pedagogy, which are beauty, truth, and good. And on the following, pic following pictures, I would like to show you a few examples. This, these pictures are from my lecture about uh, Waldorf architecture, about Waldorf schools. And I will show you a few examples connected with the beauty, truth and good. On that first picture, you see a facade of a house. And the beauty is usually connected with the change of the form. When one form is going into the other form, it is slowly changing, like in the nature. When something is growing, life is behind, the growing form is slowly changing in a time. And in architecture, we can express that, for example, using little different forms of the window being next to the other. So then when I look on the facade of a house from one side to the other side, I experience the change of the forms of the windows. It is just one example. There can be change of many other different particles or parts of architecture, like edges of roofs, heads of columns, and many, many other details. And uh, I would like to show you also some example when Rudolf Steiner was speaking about the beauty, what he mentioned as a basic principles for beauty. When the spirit and the soul of the child is going to be prepared to be incarnated in the earth, the soul and the spirit of human being is slowly, slowly coming closer and closer to the surface of the Mother Earth and is choosing the place where she or he will be born or incarnated. It is of course a family, a social surrounding, but it is also the place where our soul and spirit would like to spend our our life, where we would like to live, in which surrounding, in which country, in which landscape. And what is typical is uh, the mood we would like to live in. And the mood is created by a relief of the landscape we are living in. By relief, I mean landscape quality. I mean valleys, mountains, rivers, hills going up and down, green areas or flat areas or mountain areas. There are many, many different kind of landscapes and we as a coming soul and spirit are choosing what we would like to live in, what we would like to experience the whole life, which kind of surrounding. And the atmosphere in the landscape is mainly created by the char character of the landscape. Here on this picture, you see Middle Europe. Here are 
mountains, Alps, on the south of Europe, here is the central Europe, and the green here, this is the north, north part of Europe. Here in the middle, you can see my country, Czech Republic, here, surrounded by mountains. And on the right side here is a Slovak Republic. In Slovak Republic, there is a big, there are big mountains on the north called Tatras. So you see the typical, for example, for our landscape are green areas in the middle, some rivers in the middle, valleys in the middle, and on the north we have mountains and on the south we have mountains. So there are different atmospheres and the same we can do with architecture. We can work with plasticity, with relief qualities on our facades of our building to bring different atmospheres. We can look on other picture. So this is a typical landscape of my country where you can see some valleys, mountains, lakes, rivers. And now I will switch on the picture where I will show you just only relief. This is the surface of wood. It was a wood carving, just showing an example of different moods of higher places and lower places. And when I was in the beginning speaking about borders of different moods and atmospheres on your place, which we will be looking for, it is on that relief too. You see that here is an atmosphere of the space which is lower, which is going down. And somewhere here is a feeling border where the atmosphere is changing. Here in the middle between those three lower, lower places is a completely different atmosphere. This is above. This is flat. This is, let's say, open, full of light. And these three places are lower. There is a shadow. It's a completely different atmosphere. Uh, imagine, this is a landscape. And I am going to be born, maybe I like to be born in the valley or I would like to be born on the top of the mountain. So this is very important to follow some basic atmospheres and moods on your place, on the certain place you have. And I'm sure we can find those different atmospheres there together. Each place has different atmospheres and moods. So here are a few examples of uh, other surfaces. This is, for example, a copper plate, which is handmade. And this is uh, artistically created relief. The topic was the mood of the liquid, of the moving liquid. And uh, this is an example of a living surface. This is the gate or the door in the kingdom or world of living architecture, of organic architecture. To play with plasticity, to begin to begin to bring spirit in the material, in the matter. On that picture you can see one example of the common work with children and teachers in Waldorf School in Prague. 
where we were looking for a solution of the Waldorf Garden. In the very beginning, we were looking on different atmospheres, on different corners of the garden. We draw and sketch those feeling borders on the paper, each of the people. And later on, we made this model together. And here you can see, for example, different atmosphere between entrance line. Here is a little way into the main entrance of the school, which is in this place. And we wanted to divide atmosphere of the walking line, walking way of this pavement from the garden. That's why we created here in between the way and the rest of the garden a little higher relief or higher place where will be planted some flowers and bushes and trees. So we divided atmospheres between. One atmosphere is entrance, walking area, and another atmosphere is the playground in the middle of the garden. So it is divided. It was very important to find some borders between different moods and different atmospheres. Um, in, the in the very beginning of that project, we met together. Children sang a song. They spoke some poetry and wishes for their garden, for the spirit of the garden. They burned candle. They were very happy to begin the project. And then, in the beginning of the project, they mark on the grass with... Uh, calc powder some borders of different atmospheres which they experienced in the very beginning of the project and on those places they began to build some garden forms using uh, earth sand stones and different plants and trees and bushes. So, for example, I will show you this picture on the beginning and now I will switch on the ready garden. The same view, the same picture. Just a minute. That's the same. You know, this is after one year, ready garden. So here where you can see a little wall made of stones and earth. It is the same line, same border of atmosphere around entering line, entering the little pavement, and the rest of the garden behind the little wall. So I will go back again at the same direction of the view look it was in the beginning here is the line the pavement now here is the stone and little higher place which divide the rest of the garden and it is the same with architecture for example here at that place where i felt in a very beginning kind of border of atmospheres could be for example the wall of the building which divide outside different atmosphere and inside different atmosphere. So it's just only the helpful procedure to work with those principles. And it is good to cooperate, to feel it together. So the beauty is also connected with the relief which can be created on the surface of the garden or on the facade of the architecture or even it can be painted on the wall as a motif of some 
fairy tales or storytelling. And children in a very early age, from let's say two to seven years old, they prefer to have uh, pictures or paintings which are not very realistic. I mean pictures or paintings which show just a basic atmosphere, the mood of the fairy tale. So this was something a little bit about beauty. And now we will go into the principles of truth. So truth, learning truth in life, something what should be truthful, architecture can help us. And for example, we can have a look on the example of the main entrance to the future world of kindergarten in one uh, city in Slovakia, in Zvolen. And what is very important connected with the truth is that the child really rec recognizes very well where is the main entrance to the school or to the kindergarten. She or he sees truly what is the truth. So here you can recognize the main entrance in the middle. It's like a hole or like a gate, like an open space which go inside. And what is also go good for feeling truth is, for example, symmetry principles. Those two small windows on sides from the main entrance, something which has also axis, what is symmetric, this is also truthful because we are living in symmetric world. Everything what is living, what has life inside, what live, has some parts or some principles of symmetry. Animal, plant, blossom, leaf, face of the human being, our body, there are some principles of symmetry. So truth is very much connected with the symmetry and also with the main and something of what is on the side, what is not main. So here on that picture we see that these doors are very important. They are main. And what is less important is on sides. Those small windows Behind them is something small, something less important. For example, a toilet or a dressing room. But here is the really main entrance. This is very important. Also, when you look on the main facade, for example, here in the first floor, you see a very, very big window. This window is connected with the main playroom in the kindergarten big classroom, main classroom of the kindergarten. And small windows is maybe to the kitchen or storage or to the office. But what is main is really recognizable as a main form of the facade of the building. And also what is important is, let's say, higher for example, some roof, what is less, import, less important is lower, and so on. And in this case, you see what was also important for teachers and uh, parents and also for some children to have a slope for small children going down. So it was like a playful, enjoyable, new small building with those enjoyable parts for our senses and experiences. There is also a little dark tunnel for small children. 
So in this case, they wanted to make a architecture very, very playful. We were working on it about two days together with parents and teachers. And it was very enjoyable time when we did it together. And the result are some drawings where you can see the main entrance, the main window into the main classroom. And here is the ground floor plan with the main entrance in the middle, some cloakroom here. This is the ground floor plan with the main classroom here. Here is an eating room and a little kitchen and toilet with blue color. So this was just an example how to work with truth in architecture for children. And the third pillar is the quality of good. So the good is connected with the good sound or good um, atmosphere. It is connected with good acoustic. And uh, we can have a look on the good quality, improving hearing, improving listening, uh, improving sounds and hearing well. When the room is tuned well, it sounds well. So there should, should not be any echo. And how can we how can we make it? We can make it with proper proportions of the room. We can use a very good relations relations sizes of the room. I mean the length of the room, width of the room, height of the room. And if we we use a good proportions of all sizes of the room then there will be good quality, good hearing of the human voice, nice listening of fairy tales, of storytelling, good sound of singing, good sound and hearing of playing instruments, and there will be no echo. And how we can do it? With a good auspicious proportions. For example, quinta, three to five. For example, here on the meeting between the wall and the ceiling, you see a little bit diagonal part of the wall or of the ceiling. In detail, you can have a look. These particles these slopes or pieces are made in a very proper exact proportion 3 parts in vertical direction 5 parts in horizontal direction and between the triangle between makes the very good angle to reduce echo the sound in such a room is tuned in quinta mood it is very good for storytelling for example so it was made in existing building and those parts of the ceiling influenced very well whole atmosphere in that playroom in that in that classroom and this good we can bring into the architecture also with the proportion of windows proportion of doors it can be a complete proportion of the classroom i can have a look on the ground floor plan of a new project i'm working for all modes we can have a look on it 
and there you will see a whole proportion of the classroom it is that one <clears throat> this is a newly planned Waldorf school in Olomouc and you can see there different classrooms from the class 1 to the class 9 and what I would like to mention with relations to good to quality of good is the proportion of parts of the walls this shape of the classroom is very auspicious for good acoustic because when the teacher is speaking here he or she is speaking to the direction of children yeah and his or her voice goes and from those walls is return back to the room so the voice the direction of the voice goes this direction goes this direction and goes back to the child from behind and because this part of the wall is shorter and this part of the wall is longer there is asymmetry which is very good to reduce echo in every room so this is one principle and the length of that part of the wall is two and the length of that longer part of the wall is three so it is a proportion of quinta again which is very good for the mood of the room so when the quality of good is in the room in the classroom very well done then it is very helpful for the voice of the teacher because when teacher is uh, saying his uh, knowledge to the child or he or she is uh, telling the story or fairy tale then the best result which can happen to the child mood is when the rhythm of the heartbeat and the rhythm of uh, breathing is in proportion four to one it is the ideal rhythm or the mood in which child while he or she is listening the teacher can go in and to become into such a state of uh, mind or of the body is helpful the quality of the voice or the quality of the atmosphere of the room created through listening so for the good is very important very well done proportion of the room and particles parts of the room so it was the third quality good uh, here you can see another ground floor of a different project this is uh, my newest project in Chemnitz in Germany and on this ground floor plan you can also see the principles of good using uh, proper proportion of quinta but on this project I would like to show you something also else something of uh, other important principles of Waldorf pedagogy and it is the quality creating or supporting etheric 
forces, leading forces, leading forces of organic architecture which influence to build to improve our etheric body. So here you can see the ground floor plan and now I will show you the model and those principles of uh, creating etheric body. On this picture you can see model which is in the stage of development and those etheric qualities of organic architecture for Waldorf schools is supported when one form goes smoothly into the other form. So we can look on the shape of the building following one form smoothly going and connecting and following into the other form. So you can see it also here that the area of the facade, for example, which is vertical, is smoothly, slowly going into the area of the roof, which is horizontal. So there are areas which help the flow to continue from one vertical surface into the other horizontal surface. So these flow principles, when one form follow the other form and it's slowly changing into the other form, these forms, these organic forms are very helpful and supporting to create child's etheric body. It is also healthy for us as adults when we could be surrounded with such an architecture because it will be also supporting not only our etheric body but also supporting the movement in our astral body which we need also. So here we can have a look uh, on the model from other side where are placed main classrooms and here you can see some of other principles that here is truthfully expressed which windows belongs to the classroom. All those three windows are connected with one classroom. So from the structure of the architecture, from the rhythm of the building, you can very well recognize where are classrooms. One classroom is from here, another classroom is here, third classroom is here, here is some small window which belong not to the classroom. It is recognizable. This is a window which leads to the corridor. It is another classroom, another group. So there is quite a big uh, curve above all three windows. They create a group and everything what is visible creating a group belongs to the main space behind it. And also when we use some round shapes above us, I mean the top parts of the window or ceilings which, when they could be a bit round, a bit curved, that it is creating very well mood, very well warm atmosphere. It is like a sky above us. It surrounds us. So, etheric body is supported by using forms which are flowing, which go up and down, which are really, really living. So this I wanted to mention as one of the other principles to support our etheric and astral body.
this uh, last example of the school building I showed you, it was from my last project I'm doing in Chemnitz in Germany. So if you will want, I can answer to you some other questions. Today I answered two main questions, which methods we can use to create some campus, some project, and the second, how to create uh, Waldorf schools, what is typical for Waldorf schools. So we can have a look on some principles later, if you will want. So this is the presentation from Chemnitz. And I'm looking forward to cooperate with you on your beautiful campus project in Reno. You have a beautiful plot with a beautiful wetland. So I'm looking forward to cooperate with you when you will want. Thank you and goodbye.